Jesus came. Why did he come? He came for all of us. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, the new has come. And then you can enter into a covenant relationship with God that no relation of yours should die a Christless death. All have sinned, but the gift of God is eternal life. Welcome to another edition of our program, God and Your Family. We are continuing with our new series under the general theme, Parenting, Raising Up Godly Children. Raising up or bringing godly children is a spiritual responsibility because godly children are a product of godly parents. To raise or bring up children that are godly, children that love the Lord and fear God, children that are obedient and respectful and responsible, then the parents must learn the art of godly parenting. Today, our topic of discussion is parenting, characteristics of a godly mother. Last week, we looked at godly father. Today, we are looking at godly mother. Join me as we welcome our usual panel of discussants to my extreme left, my sister, Pastor Mrs. Hassanaho Kutu, you are welcome, my dear. Thank you very much, Mommy. Hello, viewers. God bless you. And next to him is my pastor sorry, sorry, smiling. Sorry. Can we do it again? Next to him. Next, next to, to her. her. So please repeat her greeting again. Okay. My sister, just introduce to her. To my. Yes. My sister. Yes. Like to that. my extreme left is my sister, Pastor Mrs. Hokujiat. You are welcome, my sister. Thank you, mommy, and good evening, viewers. And next to her, smiling, <laughs> is my pastor, her husband, <laughs> the Reverend Ambassador Dr. Krakadi Samuel Kujiat. You are welcome. Thank sister. you, my sister, for this excellent introduction. God bless you. <laughs> good evening, viewers. And to my immediate left is my daughter, Esther. You are welcome, Esther. Has, uh, Esther Amlabu. Take it again. <laughs> to, my... to my immediate left okay. is my daughter, Pastor Mrs. <laughs> Esther Abetoro Amlabu. You are welcome. Thank you, Mommy. Welcome, viewers. And I'm your host, Reverend Mrs. Ifoma Uchemwafo. You are welcome. Stay tuned. Our discussion questions today is. What are the characteristics of a godly mother? Mm -hmm. Let's start with you, my sister. Well, a, a godly mother is, um, just as the word said, godly. She's godly. She's, first of all, she submits to her husband. Because um, a mother, how do you, does you become a mother? You have a husband that both of you now have children with. So the first thing is that a godly mother submits to the husband. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. Wife submits to your own husbands in everything. Just as he is admonished to love her as the husband, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, doing their roles bring peace and stability in the home. Where children are raised. Um, so what else can you say about a godly mother? <laughs> a godly mother is one that fears the Lord. Uh, God in turn grants her the grace and the wisdom to raise her children. You know, she, she, she loves her children. God grants her the grace and the wisdom we wish to, 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 to raise these children, to teach them. She's a wonderful sir. mother. Please, can you read Psalm 111? Psalms 111, verse 10. Verse 10. Yes. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments, his praise endure it forever. Yes. If the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Just like Daddy said, she fears the Lord. 
and because of that, she has wisdom. She's a wise mother. She's a wise woman. A, 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 a godly mother cares for her own, her own, her own, her own house, her own home, her own people around her, her own children, her own husband, seeking always the good of her home and her family first. Not taking care of people outside and neglecting her own. Mm -hmm. Not uh, um, charity begins, begins at home. Not not dressing well and her children are wearing rags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take care of her own. Proverbs thirty one twenty seven. Proverbs thirty one twenty seven. She watches mm -hmm. over the ways of her household, her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Mm -hmm. She watches over the affairs or the ways of her household. She does not eat the bread of idleness. No wonder the Bible says that every wise woman builds her own home. Yes, yes. She doesn't eat the bread of idleness, mm -hmm. spending time gossiping with other people. She cares for her family. Yes. yes. What else can you say, my sister? A godly mother is trustworthy. Trustworthy. Proverbs 31, verse 11, it says, The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. Mm. So her husband trusts her, having no worry about anything. This brings honor to him and to God through her faithful weakness and living. You know, so she's not the type that they have budgeted money to buy food. Mm. You know, the heart of her husband safely trusts her. Yes. She's not the type that as she gets into the market and she found somebody around one corner ringing bell. Mm -hmm. Everybody come and buy, come and take your head tie. No more neighbor, borrow me. Come and take your own. 2020 20 Naira. 2020 20 Naira. She doesn't stand to listen. From listening, she will pick one. Then, after picking one, she now starts to recalculating the money she has to cover up. Maybe crayfish would have been 15 naira on her list. It will now become 20 naira mm -hmm. to make a job allowance for that. Mm -hmm. Such women are wicked and they cheat their husbands and their children. Mm -hmm. She's not that type of woman. Mm -hmm. Now, what else can you say, Pastor, about this godly mother? Well, we talk about... Uh, Godly mother, one that considers the beauty in the heart. That means she does not seek external beauty alone. No woman doesn't want to be beautiful, to look beautiful. But she realizes that, you know, it's not the external, but the inner man. So she, 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 she that's her consideration. The most beautiful part of a person is their heart and spirit. So a godly mother recognizes that and she spends her time, you know, trying to conduct herself in that way that, you know, shows the inner beauty of her being. And that's what she portrays to the children. So she's a godly mother. So such a woman is not a woman that you find her spending hard earned money. From the family to uh, to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah. She's not the type that goes on hunger strike, quarrels with her husband because her neighbors have changed window blinds. Yeah. Then the moment the man comes, he says, Aha, come and see you. It's only in this house that there is always Hamatana. <laughs> uh, see Mama Peter. They have even changed the window, window blind. Mm. It's only in this house we are still using the one we used five years ago. She's not that type of woman. Mm -hmm. Every wise woman builds her home. She's the type of woman that, let us look at Ezekiel chapter 16 and read verse 44b. Ezekiel 16, 44b. Ezekiel 16, 44b. Mm -hmm. As it is the mother, so is her daughter. That's As yes. is the mother, so is her so daughter. Is her daughter. Mm. Had we said that by example, training of children, one of the ways is by example. Mm -hmm. Her daughters are watching her. Mm. 
And so that which she gives as priority in her life, as her children are coming up, they are also copying it. Mm. There's an Igwe Adek that says that whatever is given birth to by a snake has no choice but to be long. Mm. <laughs> so uh, uh, the way she, she knows that she's a role model to her daughters. Mm. So where, whatever you see in her, that's what you expect to see in her daughters. Mm. So she's the one that serves her family. She's the one that trains the young women to love their own husbands and their children. Mm. She's, so that they too will turn out to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands. Not the type that will be gossiping from one neighborhood to the other. Before you know it, you'll find them quarreling. Mm. It, it's really very shameful when you are passing through some neighborhood and you see women fighting. And when you come to look at it, there are women that have children. Mm. What are they showing their daughters? And the men, poor innocent men, maybe that you are not even there where the whole thing, when it was happening, they end up fighting themselves, themselves. because they have careless women. Mm. These are the type of women that the Bible refers to in Isaiah 32, that they are careless women, careless daughters. They are, that instead of being careless women, careless daughters, they, they should make a turn around and become prayerful, mm. praying for their wives, their daughter, husbands, praying for their children. There is always something to pray about. There, always, there is always something. You know, I was blessed recently when I overheard a, some, some, a conversation that about that no matter how bad a child is, once a woman bends knees for that child, that, that child will have a turnaround, a good turnaround. And that is true. Now, that's what it actually means, uh, saying that a godly mother actually gives her children back to God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just like um, um, Hannah did. Hannah had Samuel mm -hmm. and made a vow with God that if you give me the son, I will give him back to you. That's it. That's something that a godly mother does. That's it. No matter how... Um, how um, what difficult your child is, if you are willing to give that child back to God, mm. and how do you give back your child back to God? In prayer. Mm. You take that child and you every day you are praying for that child, that the destiny that God wrote or, command or put upon that child when that child was created, mm. that that destiny will come to pass. As long as you keep faithful to God and keep faithful to prayer, that destiny will come to pass. A godly woman, godly mother, doesn't take no for an answer. That's yeah. right. She keeps crying unto God until God, who hears prayers, answers her. Yes. She never gives up on any child. Mm -hmm. I don't know the child children you have in your home. How do you see them? Have you given up on any? God knew you before he packaged this child and sent you to be a steward over that child. God knows you can take care of that child for him. So all you need is to relax and ask God to help you. The grace to be a godly mother indeed to that child, to release it upon you. It is the mother. No wonder the Bible says that when the child doesn't turn out well, that child is a shame to the mother. It's the mother, not the father. Mm -hmm. The grace is upon the woman. So when the child doesn't turn out well, it is you that goes through the shame if you're a mother. Mm -hmm. So it's not a time to relax. As long as this child, this child, whether they are boys, they are girls, uh, your, your, your responsibility is to, under God, make sure that the destiny of that child is not tampered with. Right. You refuse to take no answer for an answer. So, so you talk about it, the destiny of the child not tampered with. 
it just occurred to me that just like God has a destiny for every child, yeah. Satan also has a destiny. Yes. And if mothers will not arise and take hold of the destiny of God concerning their children, they just give the they give Satan a, a chance to bring back to bring to pass what Satan has in mind for that child. Mm. So, oh, in, in taking hold of that destiny that God has for the child, mm -hmm. it, it is also important that the, the godly mother speak the right word. Yeah. The, right the, word. the right That's word, right. the word of wisdom, word of kindness. Mm -hmm. Even if you are saying it and you are saying the opposite, mm -hmm. keep saying it. Words can create. Speak the word. Don't say what you are saying. Mm -hmm. Say what you know that God has said concerning that child. Right. And the word will come to pass one day in the life of that child. Mm -hmm. The word have a way of fighting whatever is fighting the child. As you keep saying it, the word will fight whatever evil that is fighting the child. And then you will say the positive thing. And then we also talked about... Sorry, the... yes. Can we read Numbers 14, 28? Numbers 14, mm. yes. As, you, as I hear you say. Yes. Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. And that is why, as a mother, a godly mother, you must be very careful what you say, mm -hmm. what you speak over those children. Because God says, whatsoever he hears you say, that is what he will do for you. Mm -hmm. When we, uh, you know, there are some cases, I remember when we were small, some children will come back and say, bring with one uh, uh, report card that with very low scores. And the mothers will look at it and say, hmm, goat head. They say, I think go. Well, it means goat head, head of a goat. <laughs> then how do you expect that child to excel? Mm -hmm. How do you expect the child to accept? The goat, 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 ahead of a goat. <laughs> no. You see, this thing I'm saying means so much to me. I remember when my children, first two children, were actually in primary two, in federal staff school. I went to pick them the day the school closed. And so I was with other parents, and they were having assembly. But you know, the gate, the fence was, Netted so they could see parents. As soon as, as my as soon as my second daughter saw me, and the gate was not proper, it was not it was just closed, it was not locked. As soon as she saw me, as, as, as I packed and stood with other parents, she ran out and start, I was crying. Mommy, I didn't get. Mommy, I didn't get. I can't hand down. But I said, You didn't get what? She said, Mommy. They had called first, second, and third in the classes. Mm -hmm. So she had known she was neither first, nor second, nor third. <laughs> I didn't get. I didn't get. Uh, she was crying. Uh, Tutti and Amla got. They got. My sisters got. I didn't get. I pacified her and said, don't worry. Don't worry. Go back to the line. Don't worry. She went back to the line. Then by the time they gave them their reports, she was number, uh, she was 15th in her class. So she came out crying where I was with other parents. I persevered, I said, don't mind the devil. That is not your position. The Bible says you're a head, not a tail. 15th position is not a headship position. Don't mind the devil. You are a head. So she calmed, that calmed her down. <laughs> but you see, the truth of the matter, is that she was very playful mm -hmm. as a child. She would, more, we were living near Rimi Drive, so the, uh, she would collect clay, mold pots, and decorate the <laughs> top of the silk away with her pots. Mm -hmm. And her sisters didn't have that type of time to start molding pots. And so the truth of the matter is that this, my daughter, was a very playful type, unlike her sisters. So when we got home, I told her that those who excel in academics, uh, they, they, they make a balance between play and reading. That they should spend time with their books. And so but she shouldn't mind the devil. And so when the next the following time came, each time she was playing 
with her clay pots. I knew I must, because that was her interest, area of interest. I allowed her to play with it. But when she was saying too long, I, I, I would always remind her, remember those who excel, don't say too long at games. And then when they were going for exams, I would call her, pray for her, I said, come, remember you're ahead, not a tail. God says you're ahead and that's who you are. And at the end of this, that time, she came third and she never saw that 15th position in play. Mm -hmm. In the university, she had a 2-1, and you agree with me, somebody with a 2-1 was not 15 position student. So what are we saying? That motherhood, had, you have a price to pay, but eventually it yields dividends. Mm -hmm. We want to look at some examples of mothers in the Bible. Please, Pastor, tell us about well, we've, talk, we've mentioned about Moses, Moses' mother, that is called Jochebed. And that story is found in, uh, in Exodus chapter 2. That, that, that's her story. She's, she, 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 she. Well, the moment you say Moses' mother, If you are conversant with the scripture, the word, she gave back to him. They defied the, 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 the instruction of Pharaoh and uh, she raised Moses up until three months or so. Then when Pharaoh's daughter found him, the Miriam, the daughter, went and called her to come and be the one to take care of Moses. So. She she had quite an influence upon Moses. So she was wise to use to, to be able to cover him up, uh, even against danger. Naomi is another another good mother. Even when her husband and two sons died, she decided to go back to her city uh, because of uh, I want to believe that because of her kindness or because of the way she related with her in our our, two, our daughter in law, they decided that they were going to follow her. The one went back, but Ruth stopped to her and went and became the nourisher of her old age. Mm. Nourisher in the old age. Mm. Nourisher in the old age, yes. And what was, the re what was the reward of Ruth's action? Well, Ruth later, um, through, the, um, through God's in, in intervention and her mother-in-law, Naomi, she married uh, Boaz, a relative of Naomi, and became the mother of Obed, and who is Obed the father of father. Jesse, father of David, and also the lineage of Jesus Christ. Well, you cannot talk about the lineage of our Lord Jesus yes, Christ without, without, talking, about without talking about truth. truth. That's it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now, discuss examples of not so good mothers in the Bible. Let's start. Mm, the one that went to uh, manipulate her daughter, mm. Herodias. Mm. The queen that uh, because of her hatred, let me put hatred for the for John the Baptist because John the Baptist was telling her the truth. That was in Matthew chapter fourteen from one to twelve, because of um, Herodias' hatred, made of, of opposing John uh, a marriage to Antipas to Herod Antipas, uh, being the wife of Philip the brother. So because of that, she manipulated her daughter, made her to dance and asked for the aid of John the Baptist. That was a very uh, bad influence, uh, a bad influence of a bad mother on, on the daughter. Mm. My sister, yeah, we, we have the, the story in um, Second Kings 11, 1 to 21 of Atal Atalia. Mm. She was the mother of, a, of King Ahaziah, who after his death massacred all the royal mm. heirs, except Joash, who was hidden. And that was for her. This was because she wanted to be queen. Mm -hmm. So she killed all her, all her, is this her, her, her grand, grandchildren. What a wicked mother. She didn't know that somebody had was being grandchildren. Was, was hidden. God, God help us. Because she wants to be ru she wants king. She wants to be the queen. The yes. queen and rule. Yes. Then you kill your grandchildren. Yes. <laughs> so that nobody will take over from This is wickedness. <laughs> mm. And you know, uh, it's bad when a woman is bad. 
we, we have mothers like Atelia, even yeah. in our generation. Yes. They may not kill physically, but will poison the heart of the child against one another. Yes. They you don't don't relate with this one, especially in the house of polygam in polygamous house. Don't relate with this one. This one is bad. This one is that, and then they keep transferring generational hatred from one generation to the other because of one implant of one parent, uh, one mother. Employ, and they employ witchcraft. Uh, employ, yeah. <laughs> employ witchcraft. Yes. Some mothers even um, they embitter their children against the father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another mm -hmm. one. Some mothers even connive and steal from the father. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Steal the father's money, steal all sorts of wicked things that but mothers. But you see, wickedness always has its reward. Yes, it does. It does. It always has its reward. And so I don't know where the Spirit of God has convicted you as you listen. I don't know what he has brought to your remembrance. That wicked act mm. of maybe 10 years ago, God still remains the merciful God. Amen. If you can humble yourself and repent and go before him and confess your sins, you can be sure he will not put you away. He will show you mercy. He has not given up on you. He will never give up on you. He doesn't hate you. It's your sin he hates, but he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So Jesus died for you. If only you can give him a chance in your life. Let us pray. God has a plan for each family. The devil also has his plan. Mm. But the wickedness of the wicked must come to an end because the just has to be established mm. and remain established. And so, Father, we commit every family that has been part of this discussion today that none of them, as the sense of God will be gathering home, will be missing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to tune in to this same station next week for another edition of the same program, God and Your Family. Meanwhile, God bless, keep you and your wonderful families. Amen. Amen.